There we go. I've already got a fish on. That was fast. Here we go. What's going on y'all? It's Corey with Kern Angling. This morning I'm out here at Folly River. I'm gonna be doing some sheep's head fishing and the conditions look really good. There might be some storms a little bit later, but I've got a whole bucket here of fiddler crabs right back here. Pint, got it from Hadrill's Tackle. Let's see if I can't feed some sheep's head. Let's see what else we can catch. Right now it's low tide, it's still falling a little bit. All right, let's go catch them. Come over to the mouth of this little nook creek. Fish all around it real slow with this paddle tail. Check my drag. That's good. Just missed a hit, I'm pretty sure. Here we go. Looks like a flounder. <laughs> yep, flounder. I'm not going to worry about netting it because it's a little bit on the small side, barely. All right. Got the flounder check. Oh, there's a redfish right up there. His tails just came out of the water. I need to uh, cast from a little bit farther back because it's super shallow. Cast from back here. Oh man, he's still on. Okay. I found it. All right. I don't think that one's legal either. Another 14. It's like the same size. Pretty much the same exact size. Just right here against the shoreline on this lower tide. You getting any sheep bites? Yeah, I've missed one I need a big flounder. Caught two 14s, I need a 20. There you go. A sheep, little sheep, nice. First sheep, nice Ryan. All right, picking back up the sheep's head rod. All right, we're gonna take this crab, stick it right here at the legs and back out. Like that. I wanna drop a rig. So right now I'm just looking at my my side view or side scan. I just went past all these docks so I could try and locate some fish. Looks like there's a bunch there mid column. Let me go back to that spot. I got a very stout rod. <laughs> That's gonna be close to being legal. Sweet. All right. Bare barely, it's right at 14. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, what's that? Something just hit the surface over there. See right there. There's something making all those little shrimp go wild. Be another. Feels like another flounder. Hopefully it's big enough. Feels heavier. Oh yeah. It's a good flounder. Hell yeah. Woo! That's a big one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Three flounder. That was big. All right, so I'm off to a decent start. I've caught uh, three flounder. This is the first legal one, right at about 19 inches. And uh, I've caught a uh, sheep's head as well. So I'm just getting my morning started. Looks like there's, we're right between storms right now, but I just want to show this guy off. It's a really nice flounder. Definitely going in the bag. Maybe some tacos for later.
wood stork are the two big ones here. And then we got the snowy egret right on the water. There's a small creek right there that they're feeding. Any of the fish are coming out of it. Oh, There's another flounder. Oh no, that's a redfish, technically. <laughs> that is tiny. All right, now I just need a trout. Barely counts as my redfish, but it does. All right, I'm on my way to my slam. There we go. Redfish, check. Little guy, I'm just stick him right here at the base. Put the hook right back out. And then we're gonna drop it on this dropper rig. All right, so I did a little bit more sheep set fishing and I wasn't able to pull any up. So now I'm doing what was working well for me, which was just hitting the banks and looking for redfish and flounder. So now I'm just continuing down my line of dock, seeing if I can't find, right now I'm low tide. So I'm, I'm looking for like a trough or a deep area with uh, all the right elements, like some oysters going into the water, lots of structure. And right now the water is so slick, I should be able to see some bait boiling and shrimp popping out of the water, different clues that uh, there's a school of redfish or something feeding right there. And if you guys haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that whenever I put out a video, y'all can see it. It's about to cast. It. There we go. It's a crab. Thought it was a flounder. But as soon as you get these guys out of the water, they let go. All right. That is how you catch bait with a artificial lure. Let's make sure this thing is legal. It's gotta be five inches point to point. And as you guys can see, it is five and three quarters, at least more than five and a half from point to point. So I'm gonna use it as bait. Okay. That's the way to kill them instantly. Separates their nervous system. This crab dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and open her up. Like this. Okay. Toss that. Cut right down the middle here. And then again right here. And that gives me four pieces of crab to use as bait. I'm gonna go through that leg knuckle just like this, making sure that I, I come out in a in a spot like that with a still a big bite in the hook. All right, this is not a Carolina rig. This is just kind of a drop rig. Circle hook, crab into the kind of that little nook right there with the dock. Probably about eight feet. Put in my circle hook holder. Like I've, already, let's get, I've already got a fish on. That was fast. Oh, it's a good one. As soon as it landed, much better redfish there. That one's size to take home, I think. A uh, redfish. Yeah, buddy. Right at 18 inches. A slot has to be 15 to 23 inches here in South Carolina. There we go. All right. All right, here's another sheep's head. So these things have a whole row of spikes. I like to grab them underneath and fold that fin down and then you can work this out nice nasty teeth all right i'm gonna set that one back too small it's gotta be 14. a tiny red fish all right so i've just filled up my little pedal area here with bait fish which is not a good thing to do but I don't have a tank I keep going between the docks 
to catch sheep's head and then I'll go over and try and catch redfish. Right now I'm gonna go spend some time on the shoreline and see if I can't catch some redfish and flounder again and uh, maybe even a sea trout. I'm just trying to do a, a bunch of different things to get on the bite again. I just netted a bunch of shrimp as you guys might have seen and if I see some active redfish that are feeding and not take them artificial, I'll flip them a, a live or very fresh shrimp, so. You get them? Well, you deserve it, man. You've been pretty patient. Nice, dude. Looks like I've got a wind knot, which happens sometimes. So I've got a bunch of line out right now. Out here in the field, this is what I usually do. See that wind knot right there? I'll snip both sides of the knot while my line is still out. And then very quickly, I'll just do a uni to uni knot. And it can be done extremely quickly. Side, pull them together. Okay, and now I'm just gonna trim them. And just like that, you really can't even see that knot. It's super strong, and I, I don't have to really retie anything at all. Whereas I would have to like re-thread it all the way up and, and whatnot. Now I can just keep fishing. Splice them together really quick with a you need to you need not learn it so you can do it quick on the water. Oh dude, that's beautiful. It's every like, every bit over slot too. Yeah, it's like probably twenty six. It's just a cut piece of croaker. I'd like to just catch one more red or something here. So I'm just throwing this shrimp here on a jig head, and I'm gonna go put it under a dock here. Well, these uh, fiddlers. Sure, I guess. Grab my tip, Greg. Grab my tip. <laughs> what? Dude, you jerk. What's up with that, man? It's a lot of creepy crawlers. Got a fish on. Oh, yeah. Reeling it in. You gotta reel it fast to get it away from that dock. Keep tension on it. Sweet. Smaller redfish. Little guy. No, that's a croaker. Big one. Croaker. Listen to him. Hear that sound? All right, y'all. Now I'm out of here. I'm going to head out to the ramp and get out of here. If you want to know where I'm fishing today, just go check out this video up here in the corner, and uh, I'll see you guys there.